Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we're going to actually create a new script. And this is going to be for our fight camera. Because, obviously, before we can get into the fighting system itself, we need to be able to see what we are actually doing. So... Let's create a new C Sharp script and we will just call this Fight Camera and let's open it for editing. And this isn't going to be a very long script, it's only going to take maybe two or three lessons. So, those of you that are wanting to move forward and get to the actual fighting. Again, this is a script that won't take long and it is necessary. So, we'll begin right at the top. Let's create private vector 3. We'll give this a naming convention of camera starting position. It's going to be equal to a new vector 3. We'll open and close brackets, close the line off, inside the brackets, 0, 1, minus 10. And let's put this into the comments, defines camera starting position. And we'll come here, we'll create a type private game object with a capital G underscore fight camera. Let's close that line off into the comments. Defines naming convention for the fight camera game object. We're going to come below, we're going to create two private floats now. The first one is going to be camera value. And we're going to use X axis. We'll close the line off in the comments. Defines camera positional value for the x axis and let's just copy that entire line and we'll change x to z and also in the comments too and this is because this camera is going to move both left and right as the players move but it's also going to zoom in and out depending on how far away the player and the opponent is a bit like the old SNK fight games so we'll come below now we'll create a type private in and we'll give this a naming convention of camera value Z we want axis modifier and we're going to make this equal to minus 8. And as always, please don't worry if you don't understand the point of all these variables. Because we will cover it as we actually flesh out the script as always. So in the comments, defines camera said axis modifier value. Let's come here, we're going to create public, and this is going to be of type static. And this is because we're going to reference it from another script. It's also going to be of type game object with capital G, underscore player one. Close that line off, defines reference to player one's game object 
And again, we can just copy that because this is going to be another static game object. We're going to call this underscore opponent. And let's change the comment. And we're going to assign, obviously, the player one and the opponent game object to these two variables. However, we're not going to do it the normal way. The two most common ways are to assign in the inspector or to look for a tag. Unfortunately, because of the way this fighting system works in which it loads the characters into the scene, we cannot do that. So we're going to do it in a different way and I'm going to show you that in a moment. But first, two more private variables of type vector3 underscore players position close that line off into the comments defines the players position and again let's just copy that line we'll paste it in and I'm sure you've guessed we're just going to change to underscore opponent position Let's put that into the comments and we'll move to the void start. Underscore fight camera is going to be equal. Now for this we can do as normal and look for a tag. So we need game object with a capital G dot find game object with tag. Open and close brackets, close that line off. Inside the brackets, little speech marks, main camera. And into the comments. So, fight camera equals game object with the tag of main camera. We'll come below here, underscore fight camera again, dot transform dot position is going to be equal to the camera starting position. Close that line off into the comments. Set transform to camera start position on startup and we'll just save that off there and you'll want to do this for every scene or every background I'm just going to show you on the first one we need to assign that script so with that script now assigned, we need to come back to these two variables. And now we're going to assign the player one and the opponent. Now, the reason we cannot look for tags or assign them in the inspector is because the player game object can change depending on what character the player picks and um, so we can't assign tags because the tags are going to have to be different each playthrough and the same for the opponent so we'll do this by coming to we'll come to the opponent manager and it's actually quite simple we're going to come to below here so after we load whichever opponent we require because it's now a static variable we can reference it by saying fight camera the name of the script dot underscore opponent 
equals the underscore current opponent. <coughs> and as you know, that is what we define the opponent that's loaded in. If you remember back to when we actually created this script, if you can see here, if black robot opponent, then current opponent is equal to that. The same for the alternative and each and every one. And it looks like I haven't actually updated this script completely. So I'll have to come back and uh, sort that out. But let's just close that line off into the comments say set and I'll use the actual naming convention of underscore opponent in fight camera script to equal and again I'll use the actual naming convention of current opponent and let's just copy that we'll save that off and we'll come and let's have a look that's the movement sorry um we need the player one manager and we can just copy and paste that script in only this time it's going to be the underscore player one character and we'll also change the comment and it's obviously not the opponent this time it's the underscore player one and again we'll change that in the comment so let's save that off there so that will now assign the player and the opponent game objects to these variables each time we load a scene. So I think we'll leave it here for now. That's the basic setup in place. In the next video, we'll actually add the functionality. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope to see you next time, and until then, as always, bye for now.